This morning, the Sailor cheerleaders took another hit. That's right. Michael Saylor coming out in favor of banks custodying your Bitcoin. Are you surprised? I think a lot of Bitcoiners were. Welcome back, everyone. We are going to dive right into the infamous Michael Saylor comments about regulation and the banks custodying your Bitcoin and how none of this really sounds like Bitcoin. But before we get into that, I just want to give people a frame of reference. Once upon a time when Michael Saylor first became a supporter of Bitcoin, he was putting out tweets like this. The unsung heroes, the people who saw the future, they bled for the future. They dragged this thing on their back. They went through hell. They fought Fork War I, Fork War II. They stood up against the establishment. They stood up against the miners. They stood up against the exchanges. They were betrayed who knows how many times. They got up and they kept working. The Bitcoin maximalists. They deserve this. People ought to show them respect. It matters. Now, that all sounded really wonderful. Those were some really feel-good words that, of course, touched Bitcoiners deeply. And, and of course, right, if you know, if you were an early adopter and, and you uh, held Bitcoin for a number of years, you know what it's like to, um, to believe in something when everyone is making fun of you. So, of course, this, um, this, this guy who comes along that owns a uh, th that is the CEO of a publicly traded company, you know, he comes along and he starts to talk about the same things you do. And that that starts to make you feel good. And that's exactly what Michael Saylor did. He made a whole lot of Bitcoiners feel really good and validated in our position about Bitcoin. But like we always say, no one is better than their incentives. So we're going to fast forward to the most recent interview, and let's take a listen because there's a bit of a contrast between the tweet I just read you and what we're about to watch. Here we go. If there is more Bitcoin, Bitcoins held with these third-party custodians, what risk does that pose, having greater supply held by fewer large institutions? Does that increase the risk of seizure and confiscation like we've seen with gold? And is that not exactly what Bitcoiners don't want to happen? No, I think it's the opposite. I think that when the Bitcoin is held by uh, a bunch of crypto anarchists who aren't regulated entities, who don't acknowledge government or don't acknowledge taxes or don't acknowledge reporting requirements, that increases the risk of seizure. You have an OG crypto community that's very hardcore about it, but if you look at where all the money is, 99.9% .9 of the money is actually in the traditional economy. If you consider the Great Depression, I mean, people thought that their gold was safe in banks until the executive order of 1933. So we're not entirely safe. I mean, I know that's kind of a wild thing to suggest may happen again, but history does repeat itself. So yeah. people's Bitcoin wouldn't be entirely safe. It's people not say that, but mostly it's, mostly it's paranoid crypto anarchists that say that, okay? Because it's, it's, a, it's a myth and a trope that goes on over and over again. But first of all, he didn't really seize the gold. People voluntarily turned in the gold. They didn't go and kick in everybody's door, arrest <laughs> them, shoot them, and take their gold. That never happened. Is the United States on the Bitcoin standard? Maybe course, we will be soon. <laughs> but, the point, but the point really is we're not, mm. right? It's totally not a, a reasonable comparison. You know, people have these inflammatory, you know, tropes or inflammatory memes that they, they use. And it's like, I say that because I want you to give me your money, okay? Like, I want, if, if you don't trust the bank, then you'll buy my hardware wallet. If you don't trust this government, you'll move to my country and you'll buy a passport from me. That's the kind of fear mongering to get you to give me your money, right? And I use it to sell you a gun, to sell you a hardware wallet, to sell you an account, to sell you a financial advisor, to sell you an insurance policy, to sell you a, you know, fill in the blank. There's multiple points uh, in this uh, in this discussion that I think uh, are contentious. 
But before we get into that, let's take a look at some of the commentary that we saw on Twitter uh, from fellow Bitcoiners, because I, I do think that that's very important. So let's dive into it. One person on Twitter that all the many Bitcoiners uh, seem to uh, trust and revere, because of course, uh, he's written a lot of really uh, positive and important documentation about Bitcoin. And... Um, so as a result, right, it's it's one of those things where, you know, this person says the magic words and a whole lot of people just kind of like fall all over themselves. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, tweet from Jameson Lop. If you're surprised by Sailor's recent comments, then you haven't been paying attention. That's right, guys. That's right. So there you go. This kind of invites some type of mystery, right? Oh, there's something in the messaging that's lost. But what was he actually referring to? Well, he was referring to his post from September 21st. The folks who are focused on TradFi adoption of Bitcoin don't care about improving the protocol and scaling the network because they don't care about self-custody. The next battle for the future of Bitcoin is brewing. And I think Jameson Lopp hit the nail on the head here right? It's essentially Michael Saylor has been giving hints this whole entire time. He never talks about nodes. He rarely talks about self-custody. And you'll notice in the video, right? So it's kind of it's kind of interesting, right? We, as humans, we're all hypocrites. Uh, whether we want to admit it or not, it doesn't mean that we're hypocrites all the time. It just simply means that we are of dualistic nature. And as a result, we have a propensity for hypocrisy. Now, my point is this, right? In the video, Michael Saylor just explained, okay, how essentially these crypto anarchists, right, are against governments, against regulations, and how this is actually you know, bad for Bitcoin. And really what's good for Bitcoin is having these institutions that follow all of these regulations so that you can store, you can trust storing your Bitcoin with these institutions where you now lose your self-sovereignty. Okay. But he's demonizing the hardware wallets, right? Because the hardware wallets are the ones trying to convince you that the government is going to take away your Bitcoin. But is it really the hardware wallets, uh, the hardware wallet manufacturers that are convincing you of this? Or is it the actual behavior from the government? Long before Bitcoin ever existed, I was debanked by a Canadian bank. Okay, my accounts were frozen and I had no access to any of my funds for something I did not actually do. But because it happened in my account, I was responsible. Now, it's interesting because there was no hardware wallet manufacturer back then that was filling my head with all kinds of fantasies of a government seizing funds, of a bank stopping me from using money, and yet it happened. So is it really that the hardware wallet manufacturers are um, concerned trolling us? Or, or is it, is it really that you can't trust the institutions. And you're only going to find out that you can't trust the institutions when you desperately need those institutions to be on your side. So th th this is th this is just complete it's just complete bullshit and what you just saw in the, what you just saw in that video is human hypocrisy in action. Anyways, let's continue because there's another comment from another fellow bitcoiner and I Definitely want to take a look at this. It's Bitcoin error log, uh, John Carvalho. And I know some people think he's a spook. Uh, hey, guess what? Michael Saylor's a spook and it didn't stop anybody from cheerleading him. So anyways, let's continue. Here we go. Dear Mr. Saylor, one of your one of your most famous memes, tropes, is that Bitcoin is hope. I'm curious what exactly that means if we must discount the paranoid crypto anarchists and their tropes as salesmen with ulterior motives. Yes, there is a set of Bitcoiners that focus on some of the more Ponzi-like aspects of Bitcoin, but you are considered the figurehead of that segment. No, your primary strategy is to leverage into Bitcoin as deeply as the world will allow you and realize the largest amount of stored value as possible, right? It is you that is openly exploiting the system beyond what any crypto anarchist Bitcoiner would attempt, no? So I remain objectively confused before needing to pass any judgment at all. It is surely a folly for you of all people 
of all strategies to dismiss the risk of Bitcoin custodianship and government risk of seizure. Sir, your goal is public target number one. You describe the past as people volunteering their gold, but you ignore that there is no government demands that are not backed by violent enforcement. You ignore the blatant lack value proposition of Bitcoin in the white market at all. Sir, you have much influence. So I ask you to find a way to update your understanding and narratives around Bitcoin and its place in the world to be more compatible with its actual design. Happy to help if there is some way that I can. With respect, Bitcoin error log. I thought that that was very elegant. Uh, I thought that that was very well said. And it does at the very least, okay, if you're a Bitcoin, if you're a Michael Saylor cheerleader at the very least, that tweet should make you think a little bit. For the people that think that this is a sudden turn in Michael Saylor's behavior, uh, I, I just want to point out that he's always been for the institutions. You know, um, when he first started really getting into Bitcoin um, and he started to gain some traction and popularity, he started the Bitcoin Mining Council. And you know who the first people were to call him out about that? The plebs. OK, the, the, the random Bitcoiners. Right. We, we all just sat there and called him right out because we could see what it was that he was trying. And he's not the first person to try this. Before that, there was the Nakamoto Roundtable. OK. And again, these are all people that at some point, for whatever reason, they start to believe that their influence and who they are matters to Bitcoin and that they can help steer Bitcoin in the way that they desire. Finally, I, I'm going to end with one of my own tweets uh, from this morning. As you guys know, I'm not a sailor cheerleader. I, I've said this time and time again. I take as an objective view as I possibly can, meaning I appreciate that he says the magic words. I appreciate that he says Bitcoin in the public eye. But what I don't do is I don't fool myself about his incentives being different from mine. I don't fool myself about his timeline being different from mine. I also don't fool myself about the fact that he is the CEO of a publicly traded company and I am not. So we are not the same. We do not have the same desires. So this is what I said. While many are shitting on Sailor, you should actually be looking at yourself. Sailor didn't hoist himself on your shoulders. You did. Sailor didn't shill himself as some Bitcoin prophet. You did. The enablers are the real culprits. And guess what? It's always been like this. It's not history that repeats itself. It's human behavior. Okay? And we are the culprits, the enablers, the people that cheer these people on, the people that push these people into the public spotlight and give them credit and validity. OK, so before everybody sits there and points fingers at Michael Saylor and says he's evil and he's a spook, you need to think about your own attitude and the way that you act about this. That's really what it's all about, because guess what? If you were cheerleading and you were being like, yeah, Michael Saylor is buying so much Bitcoin, you're part of the problem. Guys, he will not be the last hero that you metaphorically slay. There will be others. And if this situation didn't teach you anything, then you are doomed to make the same mistakes again. We are doomed to make the same mistakes again. <laughs>